executioner's mask and the zodiac symbol on his chest. It doesn't reveal anything about his identity. He has killed 37 people. The Zodiac Killer's first murders are December 20th, 1968, when he shoots young couple David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen in a parked car in Vallejo, California. The next murders are six months later, when he shoots Darlene Farron and Mike McGough in their car in Vallejo, California. He calls the shooting in himself and takes responsibility for both murders. McGough survives and describes the shooter as heavy set, five foot eight, with brown hair and roughly 26 to 30 years old. On August 1st, 1969, three copies of the same letter are sent to the San Francisco Chronicle, the San Francisco Examiner, and the Vallejo Times Herald, signed with his symbol. The letters claim responsibility for the murders and contain codes that the killer says will reveal his identity. He demands they print the codes or he'll kill again. So the newspapers are like, yeah, okay, we don't want that blood in our hands. Seven days later, an ordinary civilian couple, Donald and Betty Harding, cracked the code. And while it doesn't reveal anything about his identity, it does reveal an interesting theory about the afterlife. It read, I like killing because it is so much fun. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is when I die, I will be reborn in paradise, and those I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for afterlife. He wasn't into punctuation. September 27, 1969, Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard are enjoying a picnic by Lake Berryessa in Napa. From around a tree, a man approaches wearing an executioner's mask and the zodiac symbol on his chest. He subdues the couple, ties them up, and stabs them multiple times. He paints a message on a car door with the dates of the other murders, that day's date, and the words, by stabbing. Hartnell survives. October 11th, 1969, cab driver Paul Stein is shot in the head by a passenger. A local teen witnesses a man walking away from the scene. White male, five foot eight, 25 to 30 years old with glasses. Somehow the police dispatcher calls out the suspect as a black male. So when two police officers see a white male, five foot eight, 25 to 30 years old with glasses, they just ask him if he's seen anything suspicious and let him go on his way. In his next letter, Zodiac basically says, you idiots could have caught me and you didn't. Now I'm gonna start killing kids. He doesn't though, but he wasn't above it. Five months after the Stein murder, Kathleen Johns is driving with her baby daughter when a car signals to her to pull over. Something is suddenly wrong with her tire after the man checks it and she accepts a ride from him. Once they're on their way, the man says he'll kill her and throw her baby out after her. They stop briefly before getting on the freeway and Kathleen bolts into a field with her baby and lies down. He can't find her and leaves. He later references this encounter in a letter. In 1974, he writes his last letter indicating he has killed 37 people. The Zodiac Killer has never been found, but there are suspects. First, Arthur Lee Allen. This is posited by Robert Graysmith amateur sleuth and cartoonist for the San Francisco Chronicle, who wrote two books about his research on the Zodiac case. Allen told his family he was going to Lake Berryessa the day of the Hartnell Shepherd attack. He came home covered in blood and wielding a knife. A friend remembers Allen referring to himself by the nickname Zodiac before the murders took place. Police searched Allen's trailer and found bits of dead animals, bloody knives, and sexual objects. Allen had been jailed for child molestation in 1974 the same year the letter stopped. His DNA was tested against one of the stamps and didn't match, but he was rumored to have had a habit of having other people lick his stamps for him. The second suspect, Earl Van Bess Jr., posited by his own son, Gary Stewart, who also wrote a book about his theory. Best looks strikingly like the sketch made after the Stein murders, but does not match earlier descriptions. The number of letters in his name matches one of the ciphers. The third suspect, Lawrence Kane K. He was profiled on the November 14th, 1998 episode of America's Most Wanted. He lived in the area where every one of the victims lived or died. Darlene Farron's sister told police that K had been following and harassing Darlene in the weeks before her murder. One of the cops that possibly saw the killer after the Stein murder said K looked most like the man he remembered seeing. The Zodiac Killer is one of the most famous unsolved mysteries of all time.